Okay, shukran jami'an for the participation today. Uh, I have about 15 minutes, Ustad Hisham, right? So uh, I just have one slide. This is about uh, the importance of collaboration in product development. And I'm referring here to new product development. So uh, just a simple slide to make things easy uh, for everyone. Number one, anybody who develops products has to, these products have to be developed for a reason. That means there is a market for whatever is being developed. So because it's very costly, uh, the cost is very high and can take multiple years to develop a new product. And it goes through different phases, a lot of resources that uh, goes into developing a product. So the very first question, why are we developing a product? So that means we need to understand the needs and we need to understand the value. The needs is what are your customer needing that for you to expect to sell a new product. There could be people who need new product, but really the value, the total value is not worth the effort. So that is the value question. Is, is very important and it happens very early on and it involves marketing and, and commercial people. And then once we say that, yes, this is worth doing, then really starts the journey of the technical uh, problem solution. Before we embark into product development, Insan has to understand what are we designing for. Uh, these are called uh, the customer critical requirements. These are the CCRs. You may find other names to it. If you go to design for Six Sigma, for example, this is a huge effort uh, by which you translate what the customer tells you. Method customer says, I need this, I need that. But that's not necessarily a design basis. You have to translate whatever the customer or multiple customers say into uh, uh, scientific parameters that you can target for and you can measure in the lab. So that's what the house of quality is. So once you understand these CCRs, that means you have full clarity and you have precise definition of what you are designing for, then you define what this new product is. So that is the phase of product definition. وبعدها, uh, start the product design. This is mostly the biggest, uh, I would say, in my experience, this is the longest, hardest period. Because imagine you are starting from scratch and you need to meet all what your customer is asking for. And all of that takes a lot of time. And depending on what uh, uh, specialty you are, it could be uh, a chemical formulation, it could be a pharmaceutical composition, uh, it could be a mechanical piece. All of that has to come into a product design. And of course, there will be here, this is a huge amount of collaboration. By the way, at the CCR stage, a lot of collaboration between the developing team and the customers. And as you can see, when it comes to multiple customers, you can imagine how much that uh, of an effort would be. So the product design, it can include people who are the scientists. It can include people who are in process research. It can include uh, the legal front uh, to make sure that what you are doing uh, doesn't have any issues. It will involve safety people and all of that. So all of that team uh, needs to work together. That's the collaboration. And you being on the team because you are going to bring something to the table. It's not uh, just being on the team for the sake of being a team member. You have to bring something to the table. So that's very important. And of course, you have to do your part and you have to collaborate with everybody else around the table for this to be successful. Then let's assume we do have a product definition. We have done the product design. We did, we're going to now engage into prototyping. That means the small scale, I would call it laboratory scale, where you make a prototype 
uh, we do the testing. And here, obviously, you are going to be working not only with the theoretical scientists uh, with a pencil and a paper. Now you have to go down to the lab. It involves technologists who are working. It involves prototyping people. And again, as I said, it depends what you are making. So here, a lot of collaboration to make a successful prototype. Once the prototype is done, we will do the testing to make sure what we have developed meets those very early CCRs that we started with. Remember, we have to go all the way back here. So once you do that, uh, we will be making a prototype that is tested. And once we are comfortable, then we go to solution validation. Uh, this solution validation has to happen with the customer because the customers are the one who asked for the new product. So whatever we did has to be validated by the customer. So the customer has to come back and say, yes, this is what I asked for, or no, I am missing this or this property, go and fix. And this can take uh, plusieurs iterations. It can take uh, several iterations uh, to come with something that is satisfactory. Uh, this is a huge phase and can take quite a bit of time. And then once uh, all is accepted, then you go to commercial scale. This is a major phase because if you are making grams or milliliters in the lab, now you are going to make kilograms and potentially tons of, of commercial product. So you go to the, uh, to the plant and we, uh, you do the scale up and one has to have obviously process expertise to be able to scale up from a small lab scale to a large production line. Once that product is made at the production scale, then we have to go back to the customer and qualify because now it's a large scale product. This is essentially ultimately what the customers will see. So you have to take that product and do the qualification uh, at the customer. So uh, hopefully with all of this work that took place, your customers will say, yes, this is exactly what we need and uh, we are happy with it or go back and hopefully not too many changes, tweak this or change slightly this for the product to meet the uh, initial requirements. And once it's done, uh, th that stage of qualification, the work is not done. After this, we should be able to make this product consistently within a quality control criteria that is accepted by the customer, communicated, and that's the deal between you and the customer. It has to meet those quality control criteria that you have promised. And that has to go through a continuous monitoring. Every time you make this pro product, it has to abide and me uh, meet this critical uh, quality requirement because that's what the customer expects and that's what you promised you will deliver. By the way, it doesn't always go that way. Sometimes for whatever reason, Remember, we started with a formulation. You could start with anything that may change along the way as you make this product, and that could impact the final property. So when there is issue at this stage of quality control and monitoring, and the customer Methelen, complains, saying that I see a change this time, it's different from the Marral Ula, uh, you have to go back investigate what happens. Is it the composition? basic composition? You have to go back and dig into the issues and, and solve it. So the two major interfaces that are the hardest, it's really the CCRs and uh, between the customer, it requires a huge amount of trust, not only collaboration, it requires trust because this customer has to trust you to tell you what they need. That's one. And then once they tell you what you need, 
obviously it's uh, essentially internal work to do the product development uh, chain you go back to customer and you start the cycle of validation this is high level i did not want to each one of these is a talk by itself and for today i thought that it's uh, enough uh, to just give you the high level of how important collaboration is in large-scale product development.